What is up? Thank you for coming to my channel, Prison POV. So today we're going to talk about the time I was at Kern Valley State Prison, or what we mostly refer to it as New Delano. Now how I ended up in New Delano, I got transferred there from COCF, out of state transfer, Arizona, the Palma Correctional Facility, Florence. I think that's why my time, my four year term went by so fast, I was doing my four year term right then, because there's so many different spots. I was in county jail for a long time, four months fighting my case, Wasco Reception of course, Soledad, that's COCF, ended up in New Delano. All those different places and to your, to your time, man, the time flew. Before he knew it, I was out there like, what's up? The reason why I had to go to New Delano from Arizona is because although all these other states allow California because of overcrowding to build prisons in their states, like when we first went there to Arizona, we thought it was going to be an Arizona prison, Arizona inmates. But no, we get there and it's a straight California prison, all California inmates, California rules, all that. Built California prisons in other states due to overcrowding. But the state said, you guys are not going to release your inmates in our states. So when they start getting close to the house, and they start getting ready to parole, you have to go back to California. Which makes a lot of sense, because I guarantee it, you start releasing dudes in Arizona and all these different states, they're not going to get on the first thing smoking in California, oh hell no. All these dudes will hit the whole stroll, and the dope house, and trap house, and all that shit first, man. Before they ever thought about getting on a bus. So, they said you cannot parole them from here. So I went to Kern Valley, which is a level 4 180, but I was on the level 3 gym. Now, I've not really touched on the levels much on this channel. A lot of people don't know, probably a lot of you guys do. Basically, the 1s and 2s, I look at and this is my opinion right here. 1s and 2s are pretty much about the same. Dorm living, you're not going to see a lot of knives. They are there, but mostly, if anything, you'll see maybe some sock and locks and some slicings because razors are so hard to get. You'll see a lot of riots because dorm living and no one give, you know, can't get a one-on-one -on -one fight. A lot of riots, you're going to see some one-on-one -on -one fights people of the same race, and you'll see removals to prison, to politics, and all that. Then you get, that's like right here. Then right here you got level three. Now you're getting into cell living, see a lot more knives, the politics get a little bit more, um, get a little bit more, what's the word I am looking for, strict, more mandatory workouts, and that sort of thing. So it gets a little more strict, more knives. So one and two, level three, then you got up here at level four. It's hardcore. It's the most hardcore that California has to offer. That's when you start seeing people walk around with knives in their ass and kites in their mouths and everything is full blast to the fullest. So that's what Kern Valley is. But like I said, I'm to a level 3 gym. But level 4 is off the hook. For instance, a good homeboy of mine, Jamie Atkins, got killed in New Folsom level 4 a couple years ago. Now people are telling me about this recently. I'm hearing about it, but a lot of people don't have much detail on it. It's kind of hazy. But the thing is, I know I'm real good, and I know that Jamie Atkins is not even his real name. His real last name is Martis. Jamie Martis. So I decided to look it up, and sure enough, there is an article on it. Him and some other dude were removing somebody at New Folsom. Then in 2017, they were stabbing him. The gunner starts shooting tear gas and blocks and non-lethal stuff, and they kept going. They stepped, stab kept stabbing away, man, which I don't understand. You know, it seems like when you start seeing that non-lethal stuff, that, you know, you should maybe get down. I'm sure by then you already plugged him a bunch. Unless they were told directly, look, you got to wait for that lethal round to get fired. But there is a rule like that. Sometimes they both say, you got to stab until you hear that lethal gun go off, which is crazy, man. Can you imagine that? Hey, dude, keep stabbing until you hear that gun. I mean, when you hear it, there's a good chance a bullet is in you by the time you hear it. So that's what happened, man. He kept stabbing until he got shot. His crime, the dude who rolled with him, did the hit, he got shot also. Jamie died, the other dude didn't. Rest in peace, homeboy. It's a good dude. We both got the same tattoo on the side of our neck. Got a lost way yard from this dude, um, Hells Angels, named Stumper. Looks the same. Stumper uh, freehanded it. Jamie got his done first. So by the time it's time for me to get my neck piece, it's like, what do you want? It goes something similar to what Jamie has. Looks pretty tight. It's like the skin ripping out the dude's face. I mean, he got down. I said, give me something similar. It's a little bit smaller. Not exact. But Jamie stabbed a dude on that yard too, man. This dude's from Fresno. His uh, paperwork was kind of iffy, but the Fresno car is like, you know what? We're not tripping on it. But if you feel some type of way, if you want to make an issue out of it, by all means. <clears throat> Jamie goes, yes, I do want to make an issue out of it. Stabbed him in the neck, out on the yard, with a pin, like with a metal pin. And dude tried to swing on him, but he must hit a nerve or something, because dude was trying to swing, and like his arm wouldn't work. So Jamie tried to get away, but there's ink everywhere, it linked all over his hands and stuff. He snuck into another building, got a change of clothes, but he still couldn't get rid of all the ink that was on his hands. Went and got a shoe turn. 
solid ass dude. Said, rest in peace, homeboy. So, they sent me from CLCF, Arizona, the 60 days of the pad. They sent me to New Delano, the gym. I got to bend there though. Hold up though. Almost skipped over an important part. I didn't hit the gym right away because those fools lost my C file en route. Lost my damn C file, which meant I'm an R&R, &R, getting ready to go to the gym. I know my brother there, my blood brother, Ricochet. He's done a lot of prison time. I mean, he might really get along. He's probably watching this right now. I mean, I'd like to get him on for interview. There's some stories I know that I need more detail, and I hit him up, and he's like, he's holding out, man. He's like, he won't really fuck with me. I don't know what his deal is. He's probably watching this right now. Hit me up, fool. Put acting with a hard heart. You know what I mean? Anyway, my brother was there. Some other fools. I couldn't wait to hit the block. The gym. They tell me in R&R &R that, um... No, they lost my C file and had to go to the hole. So I went to the hole, sat there for a month. Only two white dudes back there were these two dudes from P9. One of them, they're both real, real solid. One I felt bad for, man. His young kid, he was doing life. His deal was, he was, he was running from, no, he was driving. Cops tried to pull him over. I think he maybe had a gun, some dope or something, maybe a felony warrant. Might have looking at, been looking at four or five years had he pulled over and let the cops get him. But he said, he had that, no, I gotta get away mentality. He just booked it and broke out in the process of running, which is a felony. I think he hit something or something, another felony. Car breaks down. I think he tries to run through a house. They call that home invasion. Uh, tries to maybe get into someone else's car, carjacking. Trying to get away. He ended up getting caught anyway, but stacked all these hardcore felonies. Ended up giving him life, man. It's off the hook. See, sometimes I'm bad about that too, though. I don't really think of um, consequences. I just, what I want right then. I want to get away. Just whatever. Deal with whatever later. And that's a bad habit. It's a bad way to think. Some stinking thinking, man. I've been able to change over the years. And I feel bad for that dude. He had the Innocence Project and others working on his case. Because he shouldn't get washed up for that, man. He should take an acceleration to help the dude out, man. Also, my neighbor. He's doing life right there, too, in the hole. He's a south sider. I talk to him all the time. We are both single cell. Not for any reason. Just didn't have a celly. So we're talking. He was doing life for third strikes. You see, he'd, he'd been out for 10 years. He got a good job. Had a couple kids. Got married. Settled way down. Some random wild animal ran in his front yard. He grabbed a gun and shot the dog. Ended up getting struck out. 25 to life. For, like, having the gun. Next fell in and stuff. But, I mean, he wasn't really doing that wrong. Shot this freaking rabid beast that was attacking his family. But he got life over. And he used to tell me, man, I think I'll get out Splinter. I was like, yeah, I think you will get out, man. They didn't have to let a lot of them st three strikers out. Because they abused that law. Supposed to be three violent felonies get 25 to life. They start striking people out for non-violent felonies, which are a bunch. DUI, petty theft for the prior, and maybe just possession of a gun isn't really violent. Stupid stuff like that, people get struck out. Matter of fact, I know a dude in Oildale, he might be watching too. He's on the street right now. They let him out. He was doing life behind three strikes. They went they started letting a bunch of dudes out, and he's one of them. Homeboy Skip, rest in peace, Skip. He's a solid dude, man. Passed away at Corcoran. I've been, I know him from the streets of Oildale and, and from doing penitentiary time. He'll pop up some more, some my, some more of my stories. Excuse me. Skip is cool as fuck, man. Also got struck out. Three strikes. Caught him with a quarter gram of dope. Offered him four years. He's like, no, I don't want four years. I want a drug program. He's like, I'm a drug addict. I just want help. Give me a program. He's like, no, take this four years. He's like, no, program. Back and forth. Like, fuck it. You don't want four years? Go ahead and take this 25 to life. Got struck out for it, man. And he was almost getting ready to, he was one of the first people to get it. He's going to be one of the first people to get out. Like I say, he passed away. He was a good dude, man. So, sat there back in the hole for a while. They finally decided to kick me back out to the gym. A lot of crazy stuff happened when I was in the gym. I'm going to start off with this, though. So, I get there, man. Meet this dude. He's making some moves. Trying to get some dope stuff. The dudes in level fours didn't had all the dope. They don't want to sit under the gym. They didn't really trust us. And we programmed with them, but not too much. We kind of seen them. They were kind of forcing politics, and they were kind of running it, kind of quote unquote, sort of, but not really. So we we're definitely in communication with them, and they had all of our policies very strict. But as far as shooting the dope in, they're real hesitant. We finally did get them to shoot a bunch in. I was in charge of paying for some of it, you know, because I wanted some. I brought seven hundred dollars with me from Arizona, and my money got lost as well as my C file. So it came time for me to pay. Oops, no money on my books. That was a headache and a nightmare too. Had to work all that out. Doesn't look good when you just drive up to your prison and start getting a bunch of dope. And come time to pay. Hey, you got no money in your books, fool. But I was able to straighten it out quick because I had that money. I didn't see that $700 for two years too. Two years later, I happened to be in county jail and it pops up on my books. Anyway, this fool man is in there. He's making a couple moves. This and that. His old lady starts you know, bringing some him some dope. He was hitting. Bobbing and weaving. 
I was getting ready to get out. For whatever reason, I can't remember exactly why, I had to just kind of deal with this old lady. I had to get out and give her some money. She was an IE. That was a big, so I didn't see her. I had to send her some money. I can't remember if I took care of some dope that was hanging in the debt. Mine. Maybe I was covering someone else's. Maybe I was pitching out something. Whatever the case may be, I had to communicate with her over the phone and give her some money. I forget about it. Time goes by. She ends up getting busted, taking him in shit. Well, since it's a new delay, now that's Kern County. She goes to Kern County Jail. She starts calling and blowing my phone up all the time. Calling me. First, I didn't really trip on it because she was asking me questions about Kern County Jail. You know, what time would they release me? Who are the bell bonds around? Like she was wanting actual like, help, advice I can give her since she busted in my county jail. I want to look out for her old man too. Respect him by respecting her, helping the whole thing out. She won't really tell me much about him. I don't really know what happened. All I know, she was calling me. Finally, get to the point where she started talking about, yeah, when I do get out, come by, kick with you, blah, blah, blah. She went on that level. I said, I know I started to shut her down. I kind of quit talking to her. I don't really want nothing to do with her at that point. So she kind of quit calling me, and that's what it was. I was only out for like two months. I ended up getting raided. Cops raided my house, come bust me, get me up out of bed. My girlfriend's there. I tell her, hey, give me a sweater, because I want to put a sweater on because I'm cold. She gives me a sweater, which is one of my hiding spots, out of my closet that has a bunch of syringes and scales and a bunch of baggies of heroin and some sacks of heroin in the pockets. Gives me this sweater. I put it on. Straight, draped with felonies, dude. Can't believe it. I'm like, oh, this sweater. I'm like, why'd you give me this one? It's like, this one doesn't match my shoes. Uh, yo, man, you gotta give me another sweater. I don't like, I can't stand the sweater. It's making me itch. I don't know how I told the cops and actually switch the sweaters out. She took that sweater away, gave me another one. Now, as the cops were coming to my house also, I had like about four grams. I twisted it up in a, in a I didn't tighten a knot. I just twisted, twisted, twisted it in a big old like Bonds baggy Walmart type deal and wrapped it, upon, wrapped it, inside itself, and ran with it, hooped it. Now, my mind, at that point, I know better now, but I thought, when I imagined it, pictured it going in there, I thought it was just like, maybe like a long tube. It actually would encase my plastic bag that I put in there. I didn't know it was going to open up into a big, you know, cavern. I don't know the, you know, inner workings of an anal cavity. But yeah, sure enough, put in there, it opened all the way up. There's a lot of room up there, apparently. Opened up like a fuck flower in the bag. All the dope came out. It started hitting me. I started overdosing. By the time I got in the back of the BPD car, which I was there for a minute, tearing my house up, this and that, I started throwing up in my hat. I was being real nice, because usually BPD will beat your ass, start throwing their car, and I was like, dude, my bad, I can't help it, and he's real nice. Oh, no, it's cool, whatever. Threw up in the hat, I wake up, I'm at KMC, Kerr Medical Center, and I got all these freaking, the things sticking to you. Um, yeah, for the machines, I'm kind of shit your heart rate and all that. I'm coming out of it, of course, I'm handcuffed to the bed, and they're telling, they think they're treating me for um, withdrawal symptoms. What in the hell? This is clearly an overdose. Withdrawal symptoms doesn't make you black out like that. What in the hell? I guess they're throwing up. Anyway, I go to jail. I'm in there. It's pretty common for people to kite, male, female, kite back and forth on the farm. They got male side, female side. They actually have like a kite box, go back and forth. Kite, slide under the doors if your paws are closed. You can just use the male too. I can just take a girl who's locked up, Kirk County Jail with me, and just write her name, a book, and number. Send it so people write. So I get in there. I'm writing a couple homegirls. This other home chick starts writing me. Homegirl. I don't really recognize her name. It's like, yeah, Splinter checks out whenever I get out. I'm going to get an apartment. Come by. We'll hang out. We'll kick it. I'm, what am I supposed to say? I'm like, yeah, sure. Fuck yeah. I'm going to get an apartment. Homegirl. We'll kick it. I don't know. I don't, like I said, I don't recognize the name. But sometimes I have nicknames or, you know, shit. I'm going to be Jennifer and they'll call her Jen. Whatever the case. Fuck it. I'm kicking heroin. Getting a letter. Talk about Splinter. Come through. You know, have an apartment. Yeah, shoot those digits. Talk to you later. After writing this person for a while and some others, one of my homegirls writes me and tells me, Splinter, do you know you're writing some older, I don't want to be disrespectful, but an old hag, shout out type chick who's from out of town and says she's your old lady. Says you guys can get an apartment together. It was that chick, it was homegirls, it was a, home, it was a chick that was visiting a dude and got busted. It was called me and I kicked her to the curb because she wanted more than just advice. And she's in jail writing me, telling all my homegirls that I'm her old man and shit. They're not knowing that all these girls that she's telling, yeah, Splinter's my old man. They don't know that she doesn't know that they know me. So they're writing me like, what the fuck? You're writing this chick. She's writing you and says you guys are together. Then they start asking her, do you even know what he looks like? Describe some of his tattoos, where they're at. She couldn't, I never met her. Doesn't know anything about me. Start saying we're pen pals and shit. So it was just funny. They got the clown on. I quit writing her. And this video is not as long as I want it to be. I ran out of stories. Hold up real quick. Not run out of stories, never that, but look, I had this, it's like stay on topic, and 
It's empty, and there, I, I mean, I told them all, all the notes, and there's more time. I know what I could talk about. My next live, right off the bat, see, I haven't got no mods. I'm worried if I start pushing buttons, it's going to turn off, flip it around, erase people, and jack things up. Me and Tech are not friends, man, at all. I've been literally getting mods, but so far, I haven't really needed them. And that last time, people came out of the woodwork, I'm not going to deal with it. I'm not going to have it. Let me say this. If you're an SMY or PC because you got forced into it, gang drop out. Look, I got some homeboys I have nothing but respect for that are PC SMY because it got forced into it. One, he was in the Corcoran shoe. It's like a week or so to the house, and they wanted him to whack this dude. The dude they wanted whacked was over a stupid reason, and the whole thing was set up. They're just hating on my homeboy. They didn't want him to get out. So fuck that. Rolled it up, got out of that cell. He's still a straight killer. No one confronts him. They see him. Yes, he did roll up the Corcoran shoe, but... Man, they tried to wash him. Fuck that. He's thinking, you know, hell to the no. So, do you like that? Respect. Another homeboy of mine, not to the writer, that a gang of time, he was involved in this big old hit. This big thing happened back in the day. A lot of people told. This dude held his mud. Got 88 years. Did 15 years in the shoe. Came up on a little bit of dope somehow. Didn't give it to someone or whatever. Someone started hating and they wanted to wash him. Put him in hat. Wanted to whack him. This dude's still a straight killer. Saw a motherfucker. But yes, he rolled it up off that tear. I can respect that dude. If you're forced off, gang drop out, that sort of shit. Because them, stu them dudes are still killers. But I will not respect no kind of fucking weird sex type shit. Fuck that. Got no conversation for you. I want you motherfuckers anywhere near me or my channel. Take your fucking sub. Stick it, homie. Take your like and pound it. I don't want you around me. I'm go fuck. So, I'm a mod up. And I tried to get this last dude in my last live. He was talking. I don't even want to repeat what he was saying. Why you got to come out like that, man? We're saying have a good time. We're on lockdown for Pete's sake. Bunch of like-minded people. I kick, I picture like we're all kicking the same room. You're talking to me. I'm talking to you. And this dude wants to come out of the woodwork. Come out of sideways with some weird shit, man. No way, man. I'm not going to give him a platform. It's not going to happen. So mod, stand up. We're doing this. My next live. And guess what else? I go live from now on every Friday. I want to do videos every Monday and Wednesday. Today is Monday, right? Day one today. I should do another one on Wednesday, hopefully. But, you guys, I'm glad no one's really called me out on it. I've been, let's keep it real, borderline flaky. I see I'll get it out at 10. It's not there till 1. I see I'll be there Thursday. I don't put it till Friday. Man, I've been getting caught up. A bunch of crazy shit's been happening to me. Random. So I do the best I can. Definitely going to get this out to you guys. Had another story, man, but a pretty good story to have in the Kern Valley. But I don't really want to talk about it because I'd have to really sit and recall exactly how it went down. I remember we'd come in off the yard, it'd be so aggravating. Coming off the yard for paint handball, you got to working out, you're sweaty. And you'd come in, there'd be all these IDs. And people would write their names, little notes, like a line for the shower and for the sink. And so I feel like it should be a first come, first serve. You, know, you come in, put your towel there. You know, you come in, see 20, you know, you know you're 25 people back in line because all these people got these IDs. You know, you're first and off the yard. It used to piss me off, man. And then, of course, everyone wants to shave their head every damn day. Slow play it. Take forever. My first term in building H1, my bed was the closest you could possibly get to the bathroom. Every morning I'd wake up to people shaving. Water. Then tick, 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 tick. Tick, 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 tick. Bunch of dudes fucking just bicking their heads every morning, 5 a.m. I'd wake up to it, man. Drive me bonkers. Anyway, that's what I got for now. Going live Friday. I want you guys to be there to kick it with me. And I definitely need a handful of mods. So if we shut them one fools, straight shut them down. Cut the string and let this fly. Peace.